Hey, what's up, everybody? The Song of the Self, an Exploration of Medicine and the New Human by Siddhartha Mukherjee. Siddhartha Mukherjee is a physician, an oncologist, and a best-selling author. Besides his most well-known book, The Emperor of All Maladies, A Biography of Cancer, which won the Pulitzer Prize in 2011, he also wrote The Laws of Medicine, The Gene, An Intimate History, and most recently, The Song of the Self. This book was an impressive and ambitious combination of science journalism and biography. The book is all about the cell, and the main message is that both healthy function and pathology can ultimately be traced back to cell function. This book is like a history of different areas of medicine and diseases, but rather than being one chronological history of medicine in general, each chapter is about a different development in medicine as it pertains to cell theory and it switches between science book and biography Siddhartha does this using his real experience as a physician who has seen a lot of things many of which he shares in this book besides that it is also a history book we start off with the identification of the cell by Robert Hooke and establish the understanding that all living things are comprised of cells that is, the cell is to biology what the atom is to physics. The book refers to the cell as the fundamental building block of living organisms. This goes for both plants and animals. And Siddhartha talks about the realization that cells come from cells. There are sections in the book that cover subcellular anatomy and also the stages of cell division and how different parts of the body are built with different cells and how the cells are able to communicate with the outside and with each other. The reason that the book is called The Song of the Cell is that it's a metaphor for the emergent properties that come from all these different cells. A song comes out of a series of notes where different types of cells can be viewed as notes. Just like with genes, the result is more than the sum of its parts. It's about how the parts interact with one another and the dynamics of their relationships that gives rise to the complexity that we see in living things. When I say this book is ambitious, I mean, well, the book is pretty big and it covers so much that it's hard to know how to talk about it. The book will describe how we came to understand, say, the function of the pancreas and insulin and how that relates to diabetes and how this understanding has allowed us to formulate different treatments. And Siddhartha will do this for many different body parts and different diseases. There's so much information on anything cell-related. They discuss the genetic relationship between archaea, bacteria, and eukaryote cells, and how eukaryotes may have arisen from archaea. When reading something like that, it's almost like a spiritual experience to learn something about our lineage that goes that far back. And we're talking about a minimum of 2 billion years here. The book contains an especially large amount of content on cancer because that's Siddhartha Mukherjee's specialty. He talks about discoveries in bone marrow, leukemia, T-cells, and other things like HIV, lupus, and T-cell therapy. And he uses real case studies to convey these topics to the readers there are some happy endings, but there are also a lot of sad ones, too. Siddhartha is able to really connect with the reader by sharing some very personal stories about the people in his life, his family, some people he's treated or worked with and become friends with, and not all of these people survive their ordeal. This book does have some very sad parts in it. Another big theme of this book is progression. The discoveries that drive our understanding of living things allow us to develop new technologies to work with, to improve our lives, and to treat diseases. As we continue to improve our understanding of life and cells, we're able to see that it's problems with the cells that are related to these diseases. And medicine is one of the very best areas that show how we've really come out of the dark ages of understanding. It's not the humors, it's not bad miasma, it's not God's punishment or demonic possession, it's real issues with real physical parts that we can identify and treat. 
Siddhartha also discusses some of the opposition that medical science has faced from groups that don't think we should be messing with cell therapies. That's what the author means in the subtitle, The New Human. Some examples in the book are the first successful in vitro fertilization, body part transplants, vaccinations, gene therapy, stem cells, and the development of the blood transfusion. A lot of the things that scientists are doing to try to help humanity are not accepted by everyone. Sometimes some aspects of medicine are seen as playing God by some. This book also covers how different infections take place and how rotting can happen. There's also a large section on blood and a small section on the pandemic, as well as a section that asks about how could a replicator ever have come into existence in the first place. This is one of the big questions in biology, and Siddhartha Mukherjee weighs in on this one. As well-written and interesting as this book is, I don't think I would recommend it to everybody. It can be quite dense at times and may be seen as a somewhat specialized topic, though covered in a very general way. Siddhartha will go into detail on some fairly complicated concepts, for example, the proteins involved in how certain cancer cells avoid detection by T-cells. There's a lot of stuff in here that is pretty detailed, and this author writes with a lot of respect for his audience. But for a lot of people, that might be what you're wanting for your money. Siddhartha's writing is of high quality, and he absolutely delivers the goods here. This was the first Siddhartha Mukherjee book that I've finished, but I know his other ones are good too. And there are reasons his books win so many awards. I think a book like this would be most appreciated by people who work in healthcare or are students of medicine. Or maybe you're just very curious about life, or maybe you know somebody who's dealing with a disease. Whoever you are, this book will help you to understand cellular medicine on a deeper level while covering a broad periphery of related material. The book does have a few pictures and diagrams too, but not very many, considering how, book the bit, how big the book is. Okay, well that'll do it for this one, guys. Thank you for watching the video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in cells, medicine, or life in general, and you're looking for a book with a little more substance to it, check out The Song of the Cell by Siddhartha Mukherjee.